So <clears throat> this is an article. It's called Native American Gardening, The Three Sisters, and it's by William. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, either his middle name or part of his surname, Woise Weaver. The objectives are summary, important aspects of the article, and things for you to consider. So a summary of the article is, and you'll notice that I am, and I'm sorry if you're getting a little tired of my constant going on about this, but you will notice um, I start with mentioning the article, when it appeared, and where it was published. And the author and then I literally tell you what he's doing his is um, an incredibly uh, well done article it's very well organized so it the summary it just makes writing a summary much much easier so his article um, the point of it is threefold and I just draw you to each point and so this summary is actually quite short uh, because uh, his article is really nicely done. Important aspects of the article, and these are often um, quotes that I will give you. So for example, offering a rich array of unusual taste and textures, the Native American garden is part and parcel of what I consider the soul of American food. And I just um, really loved that quote, that, um, that kind of um, embracing of, uh, locality and respect for land and the people that came from this land. So um, what I thought was really interesting in this is that he's indicating that a lot of um, the indigenous uh, plants, the, the plants that the indigenous peoples would have used for thousands and thousands of years, a lot of these um, plants and seeds have not been preserved. And um, so that that loss, as he indicates, is reflected in how many Indigenous peoples grow their gardens today. Just that there's been um, a loss of uh, corn, beans, squash, uh, all of those things. So you have to remember when um, when Britain, France, and Spain came, and Italy, came to South, Central, and North America. They brought with them uh, what they found comforting, those familiar things. So even like often like if we're driving around, um, if, you're, if you're ever in the Lower Mainland, you've probably seen a lot of Scotch broom. And broom was brought, oh, it's from Scotland. That's why in Canada we call it Scotch broom. And broom was bought over from um, the Scottish people. They, they missed, broom is everywhere all over Scotland. And they missed it just as they brought over um, a lot of their shrubberies. Uh, so we're seeing um, colonists bringing over things as well as taking things from here back. So it's, it's in some ways a sort of sharing, but it's also cost um, the indigenous peoples um, a loss of, of their, their gardening, of um, the plants that were used to be here. Like even if we just think of Kamloops, there's so much in this area that is not natural to Kamloops. Uh, then I have, of course, um, a really long quote and another. Um, and the long quote, and I'm just talking about this one here, the long quote. Let me just get my little pen out for you guys. So this long quote here um, is about like that concept of companion planting. So the idea of the three sisters. What I like about Weaver's article is that he talks about um, ways that the three sisters need to be um, in essence amended. So for example, one of the th things I find really interesting is when he's talking about certain types of beans and how they will scale corn and the corn isn't actually strong enough to withstand the beans winding around it. So then um, indigenous peoples did not rely on corn for those um, for, as poles for those beans. And instead what they relied on were sunflowers. 
So I love that he's, um, you know, kind of indicating there are ways of um, addressing these nuances that we often don't even think exist. Uh, so what I also like is, um, I like it where he says, harnessing nature to do part of the work which is, uh, you know, that same with using that squash to keep down invasive weeds. And so I quite, I quite like this article. Um, this long quote ends the Native American garden, which was actually a form of small scale farming made the land richer, which is, as he indicates, why early settlers were eager to seize Native American fields is because it was full of good food. He talks about um, choosing the right corn. He's um, really against cross-pollination. So he spends a lot of time talking about how, how to keep corn separate from other types of corn. Um, he has an entire section on planting techniques. And um, he literally guides people in, okay, like a plot of ground and preparing it. And so this is really a guide to how to have an indigenous garden, a, a, an authentic traditional indigenous garden, as opposed to what most of our, us are in, used to, which is the um, kind of the English garden, which is, um, you know, lettuce, radishes, maybe some fruits and, um, you know, that we would have in our backyard. So not, the indigenous garden is much, much larger. And it needs to be because it needs that space for the corn. And um, and he indicates, he talks about, um, you know, he's American, so he's talking about three feet in diameter, spaced four feet apart. Four feet, four feet apart. Um, in, I, I also want to say this just briefly. In America, it's, um, is quite, it seems quite customary to, to refer to Indigenous peoples as Native Americans. I'm not comfortable with that terminology, so I'm using Indigenous. And then there is, of course, his conclusion. Native American gardens, he writes, may be part of history, but the building blocks remain to bring this heritage into modern gardens in the form of flavorful, well-adapted varieties and growing techniques that reflect an understanding of each plant's important role in the system as a whole. So it's a really wonderful conclusion where he's indicating um, a holistic approach, which is... Um, just part of the mindset of many Indigenous peoples in certainly North America. So for you to, to consider is what does Weaver suggest in place of corn for some beans to climb? And whose organization as far as um, organizing of the article do you prefer? Pace or Weaver's and why? And there's not a right or a wrong answer in this. It's just your preference. And knowing your preference will probably indicate to you also what kind of writer you are. So you'll not notice Pace's article, um, she jumps around a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, she talks a lot about um, ancient history. Uh, she talks about present day. There's a lot of movement in her article. Weaver's article, I believe, is actually technically longer, but um, to me, it feels shorter. Just um, he has those subheadings, which I, I quite like, um, which keep you really rooted in the article, and it um, moves in a, in a much more direct way. So obviously, I prefer Weaver's organization, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean you need to. So that is the conclusion of um, this article, a little mini lecture for you. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed these articles. I picked them out, obviously, because you're in horticulture, and I wanted to make sure that you had something interesting and engaging to read as opposed to, you know, an English literature kind of thing or an article that has nothing to do with horticulture. So I hope that these are um, pleasurable to read and I hope that you learn something from them, um, you know, outside of like what kind of organization you prefer, what kind of, you know, organization do you want to implement in your own writing, but also that you learn other kind of aspects from the article itself that, that it has to offer. 
Anyway, thank you very much, and um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.